Hello everybody and welcome to Whiskey Daddy Review number six. This is the lost review because if you notice between Whiskey Daddy Review number five and Whiskey Daddy Review number seven, we didn't have a number six. So we're going back and we're redoing it and in honor of almost completely forgetting to do that, we're doing two whiskeys today that I almost forgot were in my liquor cabinet. The Old Scout Rye, a seven-year-old straight rye. We'll review that one first. And then we're going to do the first Lafroig on the show, the Lafroig Quarter Cask. And we're going to talk a little bit about both of these, well, I was going to say both of these distilleries, but they're not both distilleries. If this particular company were located in Scotland, they would be known as an independent bottler. In other words, they bottle other people's whiskey. The only thing about that is they would have to put the name of the company which they're bottling on there, but uh, here in America you can bottle somebody else's whiskey and call it your own. <laughs> but they do a very good job of it. Um, Smooth Ambler Old Scout Rye. I'm going to read the side of the bottle for you here. Smooth Ambler Old Scout is a collection of fine curated whiskeys scouted during our efforts to find exceptional spirits with smoothness and flavor we admire old scout rye is a very high rye mash bill crafted in carefully chosen small batches while sweet and smooth it retains the direct and spicy note for which all good ryes are known this is batch number 47 bottled on 10 21 14 bottled by nate thanks nate Let's see how we did. Coincidentally, this is not the cork that is generally found on these bottles because their corks are awful. And they don't seal very well. So this is a cork I got from a Colonel E.H. Taylor bottle and it doesn't seal very well either, but a little bit better than the one that was on there. So, note to Smooth Ambler, better corks. Whew. Nose on this one is very sharp. Pickle note, very sharp rye bread note. Definitely some caramel, definitely a little bit of oak in there. Spent seven years in the barrel. Mm. Cherries, strawberries, real fresh red fruits, not dry. A little bit nippy on the nose. It is bottled coincidentally at 49.5% alcohol by volume, 99 proof. That's not too bad. We like higher proof because that means more flavor. Mm. Arrives like a bourbon with those sweet notes, caramel right up front, and then boom, first part of the development goes right into the rye bread sharpness, the pickle note, and it lasts for a long time. It's a big, long finish on this one. And that rye is so prevalent there. It's it's absolutely delicious. And I do believe I took some notes on this one at some point. I think I did. Let's go back here and see if we can find some. Could be wrong. There's Willet. Ardbeg. No, and no, I didn't make any notes on this one. I thought I did. It must have been the Willet I was thinking about. But... Coincidentally, this one stands up the water really well. I'm putting a full dropper of water. So a full ml of water on probably a 25 ml pour. And boy, does that bring out more of that brown sugar. It smells more like a high rye bourbon now. Like an old granddad. The pickle notes are still there. It's a little bit of a saltiness to it. Mm. Makes the arrival and the development kind of blend together. Kills the finish on it slightly. It does kill the finish a little bit. You could drink this both ways. I, I think both ways. I think I actually like it neat. Because I, I like the fact that that long, drawn-out finish, it's not burning, it's actually pretty smooth. Enters like a party, leaves like a torch procession without too many torches. 
And the longer you spin with this one too, you'll start to notice some notes of um, caramel come out. And then more of that oakiness will start to appear in the background, both in the nose and on the palate. Mm. The longer it has time to, to open up, mm. there's a real bright cherry note just riding there too. All right, so I'm going to rinse out the old palette there. Lafroig. So we're traveling over to Scotland now. Squeaky cork time. The island of Isla. Now, if you don't know much about the whiskeys from there, they are very, very smoky. And what that means is when they're drying out the barley before turning it into the mash, they dry it not only with a wood fire but also with logs of peat which is basically decaying moss that's been sitting in these peat bogs for thousands of years literally they dry it out in big slams throw it in there in the fire and it gives this super phenolic smoky flavor to the malt and it just passes right on through to the distillate and it is absolutely <laughs> the first thing the first time you smell it, chances are you're probably not going to like it. If you've ever had a Johnny Walker Black, or even a Red, in, in the back of that whiskey, you'll smell this slight smokiness, and that's coming from Kalila, and uh, and also from Talisker, and may even from Lagavulin. I don't know if they have them yet or not, but uh, some of those whiskeys in the blend, since that's a blended scotch. And this one is full-fledged. Now... In the Lafroig quarter cask, what they're doing here is they're aging it for a certain period of time in traditional ex bourbon barrels. Let me make sure I'm getting my facts right here. And then they are putting it, let's rest it here. Lafroig today breathes new life into the old tradition. Still maturing whiskey from our standard ex bourbon barrels is transferred to quarter casks, which are smaller barrels. Smaller the barrel, the higher the ratio of whiskey, or uh, of wood to whiskey. So you're getting more wood contact, which means you're gonna pull more vanilla flavor from there, more oakiness from it, and it's gonna mature faster. It has more contact with the wood. And left to rest in our warehouse, just a stone's throw from the Atlantic shore. This increased oak contact creates a soft and velvety edge to complement Lafroig's distinct peatiness. That's the smokiness. The finish is long and alternates between the sweetness and the smoke. And if you ever hear uh, anybody say that there's, there's a lot of peat in this whiskey, you can taste a lot of peat in there. Well, they're full of shit because you can't actually taste peat. If you ever taste a piece of peat and you put it in your mouth, it just tastes kind of sour and flavorless. But the smoke from it, the phenolic character of the smoke, you can taste that quite well. Now the difference between this and regular Freud, which I've had plenty of because I love that whiskey, is regular Freud has a seashore brininess to it. And it's in this whiskey, it's just a little bit, it's complemented with this vanilla creaminess. I don't get much caramel and brown sugar from it, but I get a very distinct, like a, like the cream from the inside of an, an oatmeal cake, like a little Debbie oatmeal cake, oatmeal pie. And it just, it matches right up with the smokiness. It reminds me a little bit of our bag Perpetuum, which we will review at a later date. The ABV on this one is 48%, and I believe it's non-chill filtered. See if I can find that on here somewhere. I could be wrong about that. I don't see it on there anymore. So maybe it's not. 48% though. That's a decent little alcohol. Has a hint of chili powder to it. The arrival and the development are almost seamless. There's really no transition between the two. You get the creaminess, you get the smoke, you get the seashore, you get a little bit of iodine in there. Bonfire, 
a little bit of that chili spice, but it's not too much. I find sometimes the chili spice in this in Ardbeg gets to be a little bit too much, and Lafroy is always just under control. This is another one you can add a good bit of water to, but I'm only going to add a few drops in there. This is going to bring the smokiness a little bit further forward. Yeah, it smells a little more like a barbecue now, and it brings out some of that oak character they were talking about. Yeah, a lot more oak now. So I get the smoke up front. Then I get the oak and the vanilla together, now marrying with the smoke. There's another...